This video will look to provide some tips and helpful hints on how to download entries and other aspects of managing your meet after your entry deadline has passed. If this is your first time using athlete.net for online registration, please watch this video throughout its entirety for different facets and tips that you can learn. So I'm gonna go up here to the top and type in the search bar USATF South Carolina and go to that event manager page. Their association championship meet entry deadline was yesterday. Scrolling back up here to their calendar, we can see that their deadline was June 7th. Today's I'm recording this on June 8th. So for this meet, we can go ahead and click the manage meet button. All teams and unattached athletes can no longer register for this meet. If you did need to open up your entries again and you have not finalized your entry fees, on your settings tab, you can scroll down and adjust your entry deadline. You can change this to the 8th and then your entries would be opened up again. So let's start over here on the entries tab first of all though. So you will we'll notice with this event manager, they have confirmed every team and that's they're shown here in green, meaning they've confirmed the teams, they've told the teams that they have seen their entries and that they're accepted to the meets. The way you confirm teams is over here on the confirm tab. You can accept or reject teams or add additional access to teams to access hosting tools. Usually for the association meets, you will not be adding additional teams as co-hosts, but right here is where you do that. So as mentioned, all these teams are listed in green. In other words, they've had the accept button clicked, or in this case, the accept all button was probably clicked. That way every team is marked and ready to go for when entries are downloaded. If your entry deadline is completely locked and you need to make a change as the meet host, you have an override where you can open up a team's entry page by clicking on these edit entry icon buttons. So for the Carolina Rockets, I can open this up and I'm just gonna right click and open a new tab. That way I keep this other page open. This is gonna take us to the Carolina Rockets registration page and as the meet host, you will not be locked out of registration since you are managing the meet. You would be able to scroll down to any of these athletes and let's say Dana Davis's registration had not been submitted and you are gonna allow the athlete to compete because the coach has emailed and requested that you enter them in the meet. You could click on that athlete and register them for any event that they need to be registered in simply by clicking the buttons, just like the coach did to register for the meet. So this is the same registration page that the coach had access, but it is now locked for them, yet open for you to still make changes if needed. Changes you make will be reflected in their invoice and the payment collected at the time when you finalize the payments. So let's go ahead, exit that and go back to your entries tab here. So those edit icons allow you to edit the team's registration if needed. Also for the unattached athletes, you have similar edit icons here as well. So you'd just be able to go down to any of the athletes who are registered in the meet and click the edit if you needed to add an additional event to their listing. The statistics tab here is simply showing you your total number of athletes. There are 996 athletes registered for this meet. Let's go over to the entries fees tab and then after that, we'll talk about the downloading entry. So we'll be looking at the download entries and the events tab. So on the entry fees tab, once the registration deadline has passed, let's let this page load. And I'm gonna click this status button to filter to the top teams that have not paid or pre-authorized payment. So once the entry deadline is closed, you will have a new button that shows up right up here at the top. It says collect payments and finalize on in all invoices. When you click that, it will completely lock registration. You can no longer extend your registration deadline because it's going to charge all the cards the exact total that they owe based on their current entries that they have submitted. So that is a button you wanna click when you know you have completely and finalized all entries and all invoices. Additionally, this one team has contacted the meet manager and they will be sending uh, an electronic check day of the meet. And so with something like that, you would simply record check, record pat cash payment, and that way your total here comes out balanced and even. You can see the rest of the payments have already been authorized online via credit card. 
and so once you click that button it'll process everything within one to two minutes the money will begin transferring into your account and that's a two-day business turnaround into your bank account okay so entry fees that's pretty self-explanatory click that button uh, if you have other things you need to do with invoices you have additional options where you can expand and look at the options there team by team invoices let's talk about downloading entries so when you download entries for the USATF Youth Championship meets. The default is going to be High Tech Meet Pro, the download file format, with those are the exact same type of format. And the radio button over here is defaulted to include only entries from accepted teams. That was all those teams are listed in green. So if we are looking at the confirm tab, you can see all these teams are listed as accepted. Some of your meets may still have them, everybody listed as unconfirmed. You can click the accept all button to change them over to the accepted all. If you have teams that have not paid and you know that they actually are play, planning on not coming and you've confirmed this with them, you could check this paid entries only option. But this, this is usually left unchecked and this is the option that's left selected so that it's only accepted teams. You have a few other options here as well as like including all athletes. But primarily for these USATF meets, you're not gonna wanna click that probably. Prior to downloading your file, you just want to confirm that your events and your division IDs have not been changed. These division IDs are 1 through 6. This is the USATF standard setup. These have to be 1 through 6 in order to match up with your high tech file. In high tech, you have to have your division IDs 1 through 6 to in order and in the age group division of 8 and under all the way through 17, 18 in this order. In order for your import to go in successfully without any exceptions report. If you are doing an open and master's meet registration on athletic.net, then by default, you may only have one or two divisions up here, and it'll probably say one or two. But most USATF meets have their master's or open division as division ID 7 or greater in high tech. So you would want to make sure you have edited your ID right here to be 7 or 8 if you have written over here open or master's. And so you will specifically need to make sure that those are matched up. For all youth meets, they are defaulted on athletic.net to be matched up for you already. Once you verify that, you simply click download file. The page will load for a bit. And then I'll bring my screen up a little bit. Down here at the bottom, you can see the high tech meet entries file is downloading. And once that's completed, then there it goes, it's finished. You will save that to your computer and you can import into high tech. Several notes on the high tech side. This is more managed and you probably guys probably have directions elsewhere as high tech is not our product. But as far as importing, you're gonna go to import, semicolon delimited rosters entries. That is how you will import your entries. And then at the end of the meet, very important to note that your export needs to be and has to be the semicolon delimited results file that'll save a csv excel file to your computer and that is the file you'll upload for the completed results and advancement of results as entries into the next meet it must be the semicolon delimited results file right here and i'll go back to the athletic.net page after the meet once you have that exported file you would click this upload button and that takes you to the upload page let's click that And here on the upload page, you would click upload a file, browse to the file location on your computer, select that, and then it will load through. And there's an additional video and PDF direction guide as far as how to go through this page. The biggest thing is getting your file uploaded here, and then if you have any questions after you've uploaded it, you can simply leave the question here, and athlete.net will come review me, make sure that complete results get posted, and everything gets finalized. Okay, let us go back to the Manage Meet page. And we'll just simply end the video there. Again, if you have any questions, please email us at any time. And we will get right back to you. Thanks.